the Filipino people readied themselves for the next challenge, imbued with a hope that only their faith can provide. Whether the bill is approved or not, to us, uh, our role is to uh, continue proclaiming, uh, you know, that the love of the Lord and for that matter, evangelization. Those of us who are pro-lifers are becoming, you might say, more and more radical in our love for the church and our love for the Lord and our love for life. And it's an infectious kind of radicalism. There's a very strong revival. And there are young people who are living out their faith. Uh, the Live Pure movement talks about chastity among young people. And here we are working on our natural family planning, giving people a real option as opposed to, let's say, artificial contraception. I look upon the Filipinos as the yeast of the faith. I go to places like Papua New Guinea, uh, Cambodia, Brazil. Always the Filipinos are there and they're spreading the faith. So uh, we want to have as many Filipinos as possible throughout all of these countries. We have the faith, we have the people. What is needed here is really to sustain. Philippines being the last beacon of hope, the last beacon bastion of Catholicism, if we will allow the Philippines to embrace abortion, the war is over. They're proud to have sponsored that bill. To begin with, we shouldn't be talking about it because it is against the Constitution. As I have mentioned before, it should not be part of our choice. Life is the most basic right of all, upon which all other right depends. There is really no law, constitution, or program that can abrogate the right to life, which is given to us by the Lord.